Welcome to DC Today. It is Wednesday, September the 13th, and it's good to be with you all here today. Uh, markets uh, kind of into the open, at least, were slightly negative, but not by very much, maybe 20 points or so. It was sort of just all in anticipation of, of the CPI number that was going to come out at around 8.30 Eastern time. And, um, and then when, when the number did come out, actually, markets were up. We were up about 100 points uh, early on in the morning. Um, the CPI number for August came in for, at least on headline CPI, came in for August at 0.6% for the month and was at 3.7% year over year on headline, uh, which is right in line with estimates. Basically, there was an expectation for year over year to be 36 So I guess I can say 0.1% more than some expected, but basically in line. Core um, CPI, which is more what the Fed looks at, which strips out things like food and energy, which are volatile came in um, for August at 0.3% and on the year at 4.3%, which was right in line with expectations. It's down from about 4.7% last month. So all moving in the right direction. There was what we'd expected, which is that some of, not very much, but a little bit of the shelter cost numbers, the owner equivalent rent came down a little bit. It keeps inching lower. It's just really slow. It's, it's, uh, but it came down a little bit that offset some of the increase in energy costs, which we knew were going to happen, obviously, with oil uh, trading where it did uh, in the month compared to the month before. Uh, gasoline was up like 10.5% on the month, and that accounted for most of the, the increase, like half of it, of CPI, just in energy alone. So the energy uh, uh, sector uh, component of CPI was up about 5.5%, 5 5.6%. There was a couple uh, you know, of, of good things, and, and it, I guess I sometimes underestimate that used car prices are such a big deal, but of course, people buy used cars. Um, it skyrocketed you know, during pandemic or thereafter, and then has just been kind of coming down uh, since. It was down about 1.2%. Airline fares were up 4.9%, uh, but that was after last month where they were down 8 So, you know, summer travel is just volatile, and, and prices picked up a little bit there. Um, initially on the read, uh, yields went up. Um, the read was initially, meaning the first 20 minutes, as far as traders' reactions, perceived as a little higher than what we had expected on inflation. And so yields went up. The two-year was over five point, a uh, little over five, five point oh eight percent on intraday high, and it ended up closing below five at the end of the day. And I think what's happening is, is after the initial reaction, which is always so common. Things settle down a little bit and markets sort of understand that it's basically in line. And if it's in line and everything's moving, for the most part, lower on inflation, and also Fed presidents are saying that they're about where they want to be as far as how much they want to be restrictive, then we're most likely at terminal Fed funds rates. So we'll probably end up sticking around this level. There's a 92% chances of today that they're going to pause next week. And so that's a done deal. And then there's about a 57% chance that uh, they'll also pause for uh, November and December. So still some odds that they could raise, but we'll see um, on that. There was um, not a lot of data otherwise today. There was some technology CEOs on Capitol Hill uh, discussing uh, uh, artificial intelligence and answering questions on regulation and things. The um, United Auto Workers, so the UAW is negotiating in, in uh, or trying to with uh, with the big auto companies on higher pay for workers. They're looking for a pretty big increase of between 30 and 40 percent. Um, maybe somewhere in the middle of those two things is where they get to. They're basically citing real nominal wages having decreased with inflation and certainly not kept up with what they consider to be the CEO and the C-suite compensation of those companies, which is, is uh, in some ways more cyclical based on where stocks trade and where profits are and those types of things. So we'll see there. They gave them until the end of Thursday. So it's Thursday at uh, midnight. And um, if they don't come to a deal, then there could be some strikes at some of those big automakers, which would be obviously very bad for those companies, but also for GDP, technically, depending on how long it lasted, and certainly for the state of Michigan. The yields, like I said, today, the 10-year closed flat. It was at 426. So we're still inverted by about 74 basis points. So same story there. Um, we do have tomorrow some numbers out on jobless claims, and we have a PPI, producer price index number out that I think will be looked at. We're still looking for labor, or when I say we, the Fed is looking for labor to still weaken a little bit and to soften and hopefully become more normal. 
Um, I suspect those numbers are going to end up being somewhat in line. And then again, the meeting that they'll end, the Federal Reserve meeting will end a week from today. So it's Wednesday of next week. And they'll largely keep everything the same on rates, but it'll be interesting to see what they say, if any of those tones have changed and what they signal. Um, so we'll keep stay tuned on, on that front. But with that, I'll keep it a little shorter today. And it's been great as always having you reach out with questions as always. I appreciate it and uh, wish you all a very good night. Thank you. Mm -hmm.